But you know, it's some somewhere inside of me, I would still support say the entertaining because he's from St. Louis. So like anybody from St. Louis, I try to support them though. But you she, should have said she were here. No, I mean, but she she popping right now, like. That don't mean nothing. That boy said, "I'm gonna punch it right in the gut." I'm like, this dude is a fool. He is a straight fool, dog. Mm -hmm. it, uh, well, he got it. He got it. All right, yo, 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 what it is, what it ain't, YouTube. This your boy MJ Talented coming at you with another episode of What You Saying podcast show, man. You know, you got your boy MJ Talented, and then you got my boy over here, Cuzzo over here, DJ The Gateway, man. What's up, what's up man? What's going on with you? What's up, Cuzzo? You know, it's a lot of shit going on in 2024 already, so we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about. Yeah, man, we got to get into it, though, man. Yes, sir. I'm ready. All right. So, first things first, man. You know we got to talk about the elephant in the room, man. Everybody yeah, talking about it. Big, it's, it's a big elephant. elephant. It's, it's like a, a big mapping. elephant, bro. <laughs> I didn't see it coming. We got to... <laughs> it's like... Yeah. Man, we got to talk about <laughs> Cat Wins, bro. That interview with Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay. Got to talk about yeah, it. Yes, sir. I say, I say, you know that hit 11, no, 10 million views in the first day. That shit was crazy. Crazy, crazy bro. Everyone. I think it's over uh, 20 million right now. Oh, is it? Yeah. I haven't checked it today. Bruh. That's cool. This literally, literally <laughs> broke the internet, bro. It's like nothing else. Is even worth talking about. And all, like, and all, I, don't, I don't know what else going on in the world other than this. Gee, bruh. <laughs> yeah, and when you hit me up about watching this premiere, I'm like, what the hell going on? How did you know about it anyway? I seen him post the day before that this interview was going to break the internet. Shannon Shaw posted it on. Uh, on Instagram, and I was like, I finna watch this. Ken Williams always say something provocative, one, but he gonna he gonna give it up, like he gonna tell the truth. Like if you wanna hear Ken Williams gonna say it, and I just knew that was gonna be one of them interviews. Bro, yeah, it was definitely one of them interviews, and you know he ain't gonna hold his tongue for nobody, nobody at all. Yeah, not for sure. And he said a lot. He said yeah. a lot. Yeah, so let's get into it, man. So. Let me ask you this question. So, do you think everybody, all the comedians, everybody that he was talking about, do you think they lost credibility over this interview? Or like, do you believe? Man, yes. Uh, yes. 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 I'm saying the prominence, you know what I'm saying? Because I put so many of these guys on a pedestal, and like it's like you gotta just kick them off of it now. It's like, bro, steady. So good, Steve Harvey. I mean, Steve Harvey was never that funny to me. He was. I don't good, know. I ain't gonna lie. I never thought Steve Harvey was funny, so I understand what he was telling you. Know? Man, man, man. Ricky Smiley was funny. Ricky Smiley was funny. I don't know. It's, it's a lot that that was said, and I do think a lot of credibility was taken away. Martin, Martin, with the dress thing, always asking people to be in dresses. It's like uh, I see why he was running down the street. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> they were like, I, I, nobody bro, in dresses in years. <laughs> it's just crazy. Like we at the time, we don't think about wearing a dress and how it affects them, but. Man, like looking back on it, I seen a clip online showing everybody, all the actors, all the comedians, dressing up like a woman. All of them. All and it's of like, them. damn, like, you is know that what, really true? Yeah. You know what really, you know what really got me today? What? Dave Chappelle be talking about how the dress thing. This started years ago, although, if you know, but years ago, Dave Chappelle brought up the fact that all the men weren't dresses and stuff, you know what I mean? That's why we came to the big deal. But Dave Chappelle, if I'm not mistaken, when he first started, did two movies in a dress and dressed as a woman. 
So it's like the Dave Chappelle credibility to get taken away now. I don't all the so. stuff you talking about. You did it. He did it. Nah. I think Dave Chappelle. Brandon T. Jones. I think yeah. Dave, so do you think them dressing up like a woman they sold they sold to Hollywood? This and it, yeah. I do. I do. Especially if he's speaking out about it today. If you tell if you encouraging people not to do it, Brandon T. Jackson, he said the same thing after he did the role that Kent Williams turned down. It's so many clips of him talking about how he regretted putting the dress on. It changed his life internally. Like if you do that and you don't feel good about it, that's you selling your soul. Your soul is not living in this correct purpose. So yeah, you are selling your soul. Yeah, man. Um <clears throat> Like the, the the comedians, like you said, man, I love all the comedians that he named. Like he ain't talk about Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac one of the goats, but you got he Sid, is the goat. Yeah, he, he is the goat. He is a goat. You got um, who he say? He said uh, Ricky Smiley. Uh, he uh, yeah, yeah. Tyler Perry. He said uh, Steve Harvey. Um, who else? Um, Martin. Martin. He Kevin said. Hart. Kevin Hart, he said a lot of this big time comedians, bro. Like he was just letting it loose, bro. He didn't care at all. Faison loves. I don't think Faison deserved to talk on their level. No. Faison love is never at their day. Any of these people level. At all. Yeah, even the credibility gone for some of them, Faison love still ain't at their level. I'm, at all. I'm sorry. You, you are a side character in most of your movies. I ain't even trying to disrespect him. So if you hear this phase on, it's not disrespectful. But we just being honest. His most, you are, his most known role is Big Worm. Anything Big else, Worm is a high character. Anything else is irrelevant right now. And um Money and Money Talks, you was in a movie for a minute and a half. Right. And no, no, yeah, Money Talks, you in a movie for a minute and a half. Now he did have a big uh, scene in that movie, I ain't gonna lie, but it still ain't hit though. It still ain't hit. It wasn't. It wasn't the most memorable part of that movie. It was a, a, a memorable part, but not the most. Yeah, not the most. But you know, he made his input on the movie, and uh, he did. He did. Yeah, and uh, Ricky Smiley. So they was talking about Ricky Smiley was talking about. He was like sometime last year. He was talking about the uh, Money Mike role on Friday After Next. Now mm -hmm. he said that um, they offered the role to him first before they offered it to uh, Cat Williams. Now, mm -hmm. I feel like that role just don't fit him. Like I can't imagine Ricky Smiley being Money Mike. So it's like, uh, so it's like Ice Cube. Ice Cube responded to all this. Did you get a chance to see that? Yeah, I seen that man. He uh, he did his thing. Like he he kept it real with him. He was talking about the rape scene in the bathroom that Cat Williams uh discussed. He discussed everything. Discussed. So, mm -hmm. man, um, yeah, I just can't see. Uh, and then like so. Cat Williams said all these things, right? So, mm -hmm. to me, what makes me believe in what he's saying is, is they response to what he said. Like you got Ludacris, he was talking about you and your wife. Right. You rap, you had a right. freestyle, bro. Like, come on, bro. Yeah, look, what Kevin Hart do? What Kevin Hart do? That's what messed me up the most. While he responded, he promoted his movie at the next sentence. Bro. Well, while this is going on, you have to go watch it. Like, nigga, nigga, no. No. Now I really don't want to watch it now. Man, like. You just proved it point. Yeah, man. He on ESPN man. talking about it. Man, he was like, uh, what did he say? He was like, uh, get that anger out you, champ. Like, that's all you got to say. He said some powerful stuff in that interview, bro. Exactly. Kevin Hart responds to all of this. Ricky Smiley responds. Shake it to entertainer respond. It made it sound so believable for what he was saying. Yeah, man, I respect y'all took the higher road in the situation. Uh, like Ricky Smiley was like, man, I love Cat Wins, man. I respect him as a comedian. If he ever needs something, I got him no matter what. I respect you taking the higher road, but you have to uh, explain yourself better than that, though, man. I understand that, but it's crazy, bro. It's the lies. It's the lies. It, it's just like... You guys are supposed to represent. You to be our representative. So if you lying about these things, are you representing us in the right light behind the scenes? 
to where the shit make changes for us. Right. Because y'all, they lit already. They they rich. They can they 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 lives are set. They grandchildren lives are set already. But are you helping affect the rest of us? Now I don't believe. Now when I see Steve every leader for the truth, dog, it's different now. Now everything feel a little different to me. Yeah. Like, what was y'all talking about? Was y'all talking about us, or was you talking about you and him doing this? Right. Yeah. They just bro. Uh, it's just a lot to unpack, man. Is Whew, Lord. like he just, he just and it was funny it was funny too yeah you know he naturally funny so yeah i already knew but i ain't gonna lie recently though one thing about cat williams when he was in his prime in around like 2008 when pip pip, pip oh excuse me mm -hmm. pip, pip, pip come out pip chronicles mm -hmm. he was in his prime mm -hmm. nowadays he funny but i don't think he's as funny as he used to be but I think him and Dave should go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, we couldn't go. Go ahead, go ahead. I think him and Dave Chappelle do the same thing. They are comedians, but they on stage actually talking about real life stuff. Yeah. And they and it's some funny moments in them talking about real life stuff. I think Richard Pryor did they good too. Yeah. I watched a lot of his I think they had a different stage of their careers. I don't think he tried to be the funniest dude no more. Right. I think he's trying to give a message at this point. Yeah, like I love, like I wasn't, like I was a Dave Chappelle fan, but I wasn't. But the more I watched his stand ups on Netflix, I'm like, yeah, bro. Like, mm -hmm. He had the point to, he had the point in his career that he just telling stories and it's just be funny. You It'd be fun. Yeah. Usually they was animated when they was younger. They it was just all around funny. Now they're gonna tell you a real deal story, and then it's gonna be mm -hmm. funny at the same time. So it's like I respect Cat Williams. I respect Dave Chappelle. I respect Bernie Mac. Everybody, man. And I kind of agree mm -hmm. with you with everybody. Like a lot of people that he discussed, they kind of lost a little bit of credibility. But I feel like they still made their stamp in Hollywood, though. They made their stamp. They did. They did. That's why I say. It's like it, it's 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 more heartbreaking to see the stuff, like to see Cedric Entertainment still in the. That was one of these classic moments on Cedric Chapman. The decor joke, but that's Cat Williams. Then seeing Steve Harvey steal jokes from DC uh, from um, hanging with Mr. Cooper. He basically stole his show. Yeah, I seen Mark Curry comment yeah. on that and uh. I don't know. It just seemed like a lot of these comedians just be stealing jokes now. Like now, I'm kind of thinking about, like you said, the credibility of the, of these uh, comedians. Like, damn. Like, even they said, even he said that they was like, uh, "Do you want to be one of the kings of comedy?" He was like, "Nah, not the way you did, Brody Mac." Hell no, nah, I want to do exactly. That. So it's like exactly. Yeah, man, they lost credibility, and they knew, they knew Bernie Mac was the best comedian in all out of all of them everybody so do we continue to support them this is a messed up part <coughs> if steve Excuse harvey me. does something that you want to watch is you gonna be like nah steve harvey be jacking me nah. you might have told it nah because i feel like his stand-up's not funny no more um i like him better just as a host now like i've been watching family feud like a mug he stole jokes while he was hosting on the show and that's just crazy the little halloween joke that was a stand-up joke that he told on TV on a, as a host. Yeah, bro. And you supposed to be this comedian that put everybody on back in your time, and you stealing their jokes. That, that's insane to me. Definitely insane to me. It's crazy, man. It's like it's like Cat Williams flipped the Matrix in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like he did some <laughs> shit, because it's like, it ain't the same no more. For real, for real. Nothing the same no more. And you gotta relook at everything. Did he have your wins? Did you hear what he said about him? What? Uh, Kanye West? <laughs> Kanye West. He was basically saying if we all agree that he got mental problems, why is it a shock that he, but he was born? He was saying he called Kim Kardashian the whole. It was a lot of stuff he said. But it was just crazy to hear him saying it that way. Yeah. And like, well, damn, wait a minute. Had you think this it all could be 
Yeah, that's, the whole, that's what I told you. It was the first 20 minutes. I said, I'm going to text them right now. This is what we're talking about. Before it even blew up like it did, I said, this is what we talking about. Oh, we had to. We had no choice. Like, that's that's the hot thing right now. He's still trending to this time. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. For so, sure. It ain't going nowhere. This ain't going nowhere. Because, for real, it's, it's funny to talk about, like, they still a joke. But in real life, people are gonna have to start making decisions. Like, am I gonna keep supporting somebody if I don't know if they're stealing from the new young dude? Right. That's trying to come up. And they're not giving him no shine because they're trying to get uh, another dollar. These people are super rich. Yeah, most of them. You super rich stealing stuff from people that is still on the. You, that, it's crazy. I, can't, I don't know if I can. You know what I mean? I don't know. Me and who I am internally. It's like, I don't know if I can go watch that new Cedric the Entertainer. Cedric the Entertainer stand up. I don't know if that's you. Right, right. <clears throat> but you know, it's so, somewhere inside of me, I would still support Cedric the Entertainer because he's from St. Louis. So it was like anybody from St. Louis, I try to support them though. But You she, support Stacey right here? No. I mean, but she, she popping right now. Like, that don't mean nothing. Bruh. That don't mean nothing. She on every song. That's gonna go. She got the song of the year. That is. It's like. What's that? Bruh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that, bruh, that, was, that shit so terrible, dog. Though. But she popping. I mean, that. Uh, hey. You just say no matter where we can get mad. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They see real. Hey. I don't fucking holler. You stupid. <laughs> but like <clears throat> Cat Williams was holding this in for a whole year so he knew this is like if you pissed me off and you didn't say nothing at the time but you keep on letting it build up and he let all this build up after a year and then he got on he had like what he like, took he, notes he took notes he was like <laughs> it was like a 30 minute rant like letting it loose you're off the rip yeah but he <laughs> said y'all can ask no questions Bro, <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. you said I'm gonna punch it right in the gut. I'm like, this dude is a fool. He is a straight fool, dog. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he got it. He got it. He don't he got it. I'm sorry. He got it. Yeah, bro. Let's talk about uh what Stephen A. Smith said about Kobe Bryant being one of the ghosts of all time. Now, Stephen A. Stephen A. Like, I understand that a lot of people um, don't put Kobe above LeBron. That's respectable. But I just mm-hmm. hate when people bring up. Uh, even though he did play one of the dom- one of the most dominant players of all time in Shaq. But do you say that about Magic Johnson playing with one of the most uh, unstoppable hook shot of all time with the most accolades of all time? Jordan having the best team ever. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, my Jordan lady. all of the team. My lady called me. My lady called me. Hold on. Um, so yeah, I just want to talk about what Stephen A. Smith said. Um, like I said, man, you can't downplay Kobe's career because he was a big part of that championship when they won three in a row. And mm, for sure. Yeah, and like y'all don't consider Kareem Abdul-Jabbar one of the most dominant players of all time. Six MVPs. Six championships? Like, come on, man. You can't yeah, and he had the, the leading scorer. He was the leading scorer in the NBA history for quite some time for, before LeBron. For over 30 years, bro. Like, come on, bro. Stop disrespecting Kobe. Because, okay. you know, Stephen, they did respond now, to Kobe was. What'd he say? No, he was just like, uh, you know, he just like debunked it. Talking about I never said that. Because uh, I think, what's his name? Was Sean McKent from Gilbert Arenas podcast? Yeah, yeah, just yeah, like yeah. don't downplay Kobe because he, he passed away and then just to lift up LeBron and then Stephen A was like mm-hmm. all due respect I never did that I just said that he's not number two of all time but he did kind of disrespect Kobe real talk he did he did um Stephen you talking about losing credibility I don't know about how you feel about Stephen A but he like one of the last people that I'm listening to now as far as like getting an opinion from sports, anything. I'm sorry because it just not, it don't seem genuine no more. Yeah. When him and Skip first started first take, 
Stephen A. won us that was because it felt like he was actually speaking his truth. Whether it was the truth or not, he was speaking his truth. And I think like he, he's an agenda-based person to me. And it's not his. Yeah, because he just, no, nowadays, they just say something just to get the ratings up, basically. And that's, yeah. That's basically yeah, what he did now. Listen to me. Stephen A. Smith does not determine who is number one, two, or three on any list. It's for me, his career, his, he hasn't broke a story and I don't know how it's on. Stephen A. has been right on the pick on something and I don't know how long. It's been so long since Stephen A. Smith. And I'm not, I don't know when I be saying it, I be trying to shoot at people. I'm, I'm speaking about you. From somebody who listens to all these people, I'm listening to Shannon Sharp and Ocho first. I'm going to Gilbert Arenas stuff first. It's other people out here I'm watching before. I'm even putting on first tape. I don't even watch first tape like that no more. I still watch it to this day, but it's like, man, like some stuff that you talk about, you don't have no credibility to talk about because it's like, this is supposed to be your friend. You know, and it don't make sense. It just don't make sense what you be saying. Yeah, man. Um, like I say, he, I think he just reached that point in his career to where like he's under Disney, so he can't really speak his mind like he used to because he didn't care back in the day. Now mm -hmm. he just like now all the internet is base is pretty much just trying to say something to get clicks, and basically that's what mm -hmm. he's doing now, just trying to get clicks. Yeah, yeah. So, to me, Kobe, Kobe won without Shaq. Kobe was my favorite player for a very long time. Kobe Bryant, like Kobe Bryant was our Michael Jordan. That's why we put him on that level. To us, that was our Michael Jordan. To my Michael Jordan. So in my eyes, Kobe is the number two. It's Michael, Kobe, and if you want to throw a little bit more, then you can. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I agree with that list. Uh, I got Michael. Kobe and then LeBron. But like you say, a lot of LeBron yeah. fans, they just think it's disrespectful to put Kobe over LeBron. But basically, like if you make a list, it's your opinion. Why are you trying to downplay exactly. somebody's opinion? Like, come on now. Exactly. It, it aggravated me that Rashad McCant feel so emotional about a Stephen A. list. That's his list. Right. He don't determine everybody because he said that's what it is. Exactly. But nowadays, hey, you got to address stuff. And he addressed it. Yeah. And because he, because it was, the reason he, everybody really addressing it because he did, he did kind of disrespect Toby. And you, and you wonder if Toby was here, would you have seen that LeBron was in your number two, how you see it from LeBron was in number two. Yeah, exactly. Would you exactly. have a respect when you see like, I don't think he said that, oh, I got LeBron number two, and I told him to his face I got him at number three. But like I said, you can have that. That's your list. But what you said mm -hmm. up to saying that LeBron is number two, I don't think he mm -hmm. would say that in front of Kobe Bryant at all. No, nah, no way. No way. No way. So, yeah, man, he's crazy out here, dog. It, it has been an interesting twenty twenty four ain't even really keeping it. It's just been crazy out here. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. <laughs> so now, so now we're gonna talk about. I know you got. I, I know you got something to say about your Warriors, bro. That game last night. Dis disappointing. I mean, Jokic is Jokic, but I don't know if you remember the Warriors. We used to be up 20 on people. Yeah. Easily. Every game, it was, we beat the guy by 15. Before Kevin. Before Kevin Durant. It was, that was the worst. You know what I really think it is, man? What? <clears throat> we got to talk about these coaches, man. I think it's time for not, uh, not just getting rid of Drake Mine. Clay, he on the fence for me. Maybe Steve Kerr. Might not fit for the Warriors no more. I agree. Maybe man. somebody like Reggie Jackson should come back in. Yeah, man, but you know it's gonna be tough, bro. I think he burnt a lot of bridges in his day. I don't think he's gonna make it back to Reggie Jackson. Uh, not Reggie. You mean uh, 
You ain't mean Mark Jackson, do you? I'm Reggie Jackson. Mark Jackson. I'm sorry about that. Mark Jackson. Yeah, I just heard that he burned a lot of bridges behind the scenes, and that's why he ain't getting no clock. I mean, getting no time, because he was a great coach. He started this whole dynasty, bro. And he ain't getting no he coaching did. job. Come on, man. It got to be something. Yeah. I'll take a but, but if it's not Mark Jackson, I wish even Mason Doku was still out there to be the coach or somebody, you know what I mean? But I don't know if Steve could have fit for the Warriors no more. Yeah, man. Um, you see what your boy, uh, your young boy, uh, what's your name, Kaminga, he already said, like, I lost faith in uh, Steve Kerr. I feel like he's stopping my progress. I lost faith in him. He, whoa. He said that. We wondering why he's not progressing, and he feel like he been held back. Too progress, <laughs> because you know what? Steve Kerr like Draymond Green too much. Yeah, I feel like he just like the older players. He don't give these younger players no shot. And that's a problem. Cause and not like, enough. Not yeah. Because yeah. last night, y'all was up by 18 points with uh, six minutes left. This man, Jonathan Kaminga, had, what, like, 16 points in, like, 18 minutes. And you set that man down for the rest of the second uh, half. And you let somebody come back from 18 down. So now everybody looking at you is like, is it time for you to go? And I think so. I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a grand 100%. This is why I've been talking about making the move from the Warriors being my team, man. It's like, they not running the organization how they did when I fell in love with the Warriors. The Pacers look like the old Warriors to me. It's other young teams. The Kings look like the old Warriors to me. It's a lot of other teams out like there. The Oklahoma City Thunder. Like, we, it's... He's been in his position and he's been considered a great two fan. So I think he's been comfortable in his position. Yeah. Steve Kerr, it, I'm not saying you got to stop coaching. You might need to stop coaching the Warriors. Yeah, it's Everybody about need to mix it. It's about that time. But at the end of the day, who y'all going to pick up as a coach now? Man, I don't know. That's, that's the issue. But I said, I would. If it was up to me, Mark Jackson would be on that list. If Email Doka was available, I would like Email Doka, but he got the Ruagis right now. I don't know if he's attached to them tough, but Email Doka would be on the list. It's a, it's a few people, but we need a hard nosed coach that come in there and really like turn the organization back around like everybody's too comfortable in that position there's somebody in there who's not attached to nobody you know if you don't mind firing some people right getting rid of some people yeah man we just uh hopefully like you said it's still the, it's still at the beginning of the season you still got some time left hopefully they can like make some trades they need to make some trades and it's not the beginning of the season no more we a third of the season in one third it's like what 30 something games yeah, it's 82 games the season. The beginning of the season is over. That's 10 games in. That's 15 games in. But you see what the Lakers did last year? What the Lakers did? They started off 2 and 10, ended up coming back and uh, getting to the uh, Western Conference Finals. So it's never That's too late. That's the beginning late. of the season. You prove them. That's the beginning of the season. It's. 20, 27 games in. It's going to be hard to come back from the 10th spot somewhere. Yeah, yeah this is true. From the 11th spot. This is all for games in the team. Yeah. This is like midway. We're going to be talking about midway. Trey starting to come in. Oh my God. How you feel about real quick? Real quick. How you feel about that? trade that the New York rep and New York Knicks and the Raptors did. How you feel about that? I feel like it works for both teams. Like it was I think uh RJ Barrett didn't really fit with the Knicks anymore with uh Julius Randle and what's my young point guard name? Brunson, Jalen Brunson. Mm -hmm. And uh what's buddy name? Uh Quigley. No, nah, um from the uh, Raptors. OG and OG and OG and be fit more because he's just a catch and shoot three and D 
type guard. And he can guard mm-hmm. the best players on the opposing team. So I feel like it worked out for both teams. You got young players to uh for the Raptors to fit around uh my young boy uh no, you know Pascal might get traded to y'all. That's what they said. Do to the to the Warriors. So probably for Jonathan Kaminga no. and some other. Pieces. Oh no, no, Draymond. <laughs> Say he's not. They not traded Draymond though. They definitely <laughs> traded Draymond. Good Draymond, mm-hmm. bro. But they talking about y'all picking I like them up. That tra- Hmm? I like Pascal. I like Pascal. Yeah, so, but Scotty Barnes, I feel like they signed, they traded for uh, R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly to fit around him now, because he balling this year. So I feel like it was the right, it was the right trade for both teams. Mm, okay, okay, yeah, man. Um, it's gonna be. That's just weird seeing them play on that team. They gotta get used to seeing R.J. Barrett on the Raptors quickly. I don't think they should have got rid of quickly. Quickly, that's a big piece. Quickly, with a, quickly with a nice piece coming off the bench. Nice with a couple of points. Kind of remind me of Jamal Crawford a little bit. He wanted them to have a player. Yeah, I feel like he was one of the, I think he either won or he was like a close second of one of the six men of the year last year. So that's a big piece to give mm-hmm. up. Most definitely. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have gave it. But yeah, that was, and that's a, that's a, that was an interesting trade. But yeah, a trade from the come out man. It's time to make some real moves in order to find it. The Warriors got to do something. Old. It's going to be a final season to me. I don't, they got 20 more games after that. I'm, no, it's, I'm not even going to say the Warriors winning. Nothing. You going to switch your team after 20 games? No. No, no, no. No. I'm working with the Warriors throughout the year. You know how we do it, man. We can't do, I'm not going to do that. But I already put my bid in. So we're not even seeking. If I am rocking with the Pacers, I didn't put my, I didn't made my case at a stage my class. Yeah. If they not willing to adjust, I'm not willing to. I'm not one of them fans that's gonna hold on for fifty years. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so there is that. I want to talk about man. Uh, I think they're playing right now. I don't know if the game is over or not, but let's talk about the Lakers, man. Do you think? They should fire Darvin Ham. Yeah, yeah. I think the Lakers need a man. I think LeBron need to go. Let me get out of with you. I think the Lakers need to make a lot of major moves. And Darvin Ham, I would start with him for sure. He, he's it's so good to say. And best uh, assistant coach. Yeah. I don't think he got head coach pedigree to me. I mean, like, I don't know. I'm kind of 50-50 with the whole situation because he did take them to the conference finals last year. And it's it's like, yeah, and it's like, it's so quick. Like, one year, they want to get rid of you. And you know, that's, the, that's the problem. And that's the uh, the pros and cons of being a, a part of the Lakers organization because they used to win it. When they lose, you got to go. Any winner, any winner organization, the standard is winning. That's our standard. <laughs> we used to call them people to win, like we didn't break it hurt and you know what I mean. The Lakers give you a, ch- a chance though. I don't think the Lakers will get rid of him. I think they should get rid of him. But I don't think they will get rid of him. I think another year or so then they probably will, but he most definitely is on a chopping block for me as well. Yeah man, uh like I said I'm fifty fifty with the whole situation man. LeBron really not going to leave until his son get drafted into the NBA. Um, mm. So, they just got to deal with him. He look and good. Davis. He, look, he look good. Have you seen LeBron he play? Yeah, he been balling. The last couple games, he been straight balling. He look good, man. I ain't going gonna, gonna, gonna to hold you. Yeah, man. He going to see with the Lakers, dog. Like I said, Lakers, you need to do something. You can't be, you can't have LeBron and AD healthy, fully healthy the whole year. Most of the year, and y'all under 500. That's a problem. Something got to change. So, do you think LeBron should stay with the Lakers? I mean, do you think they? Do you, I've, I'm, I'm saying it should be multiple coaching changes, and Darvin Ham most definitely need to come off of the head coaching t- title for a couple more years. Go get some more 
coaching under your belt for a couple of years, maybe you get another chance. To the Lakers blow up their whole situation. I don't know, because everybody was trying to give them credit about re-signing their main players' contracts, but now it just backfired on them. So now you don't have you you one of the worst shooting teams in the whole league. But you decide to mm-hmm. sign uh what's his name? Uh, got Matt uh, Vanderbilt. Got Cam Reddish, mm-hmm. who can't shoot. They can play defense, but they can't shoot. You got a streaky but a good player in uh, Austin Reeves. Mm-hmm. Brown and AD. And you got Rui Hachimura, who's Rui Hachimura, who's also streaky. I feel like they just mm-hmm. missed the boat in today's generation because now you can't have you can't be one of the last ranked two teams in the league and expect to win championship. You have to be one of the at least in the top fifteen, top ten when it comes to shooting threes. That's what everybody's shooting mm-hmm. right now. So, yeah, I feel like they threes, assists. Um, yeah, the guy leading in the wrong category. Exactly, exactly. So. To win a to win a ring. I don't got to win the ring. I feel like they pretty much if they make a, a big deal trade, try to trade uh Austin Reeves, then we got another coming. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I mean, before we get out of here, how you feel about the Clippers? Man, we we hitting on all cylinders right now, bro. I ain't gonna lie. But I'm not trying to get too happy because it's still okay. Y'all winning in the regular season, I respect it. But I just want to make sure they fully healthy when it comes to the playoffs. Then I'm gonna mm-hmm. start getting excited about the Clippers. But right now, I, I'm loving what I'm seeing, but I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm not satisfied. I mean, y'all keep winning. Congratulations, y'all taking the uh, regular season finally serious. Yeah, <laughs> uh, said congratulations. Congratulations on that, but. They gotta show me. Uh, I'm like Shaq. No, Shaq won't give him no credit. You gotta wait till the playoffs. I expect them to make it to the yeah. playoffs. That's when hopefully they're fully healthy, and that's when I actually be excited about it. I'm so, I'm excited, but I'm gonna slow my roll with the Clippers. Mm, okay, okay. I like the Clippers, man. They looking good, man. They made some good moves. Yeah, man. I credit them, even that little announcer. He lost to the Mavericks. I can't find him nowhere on uh, social media. He was dogging uh, James Harden when they first lost to the Mavericks. Nah. I mean, everybody was skeptical about the James Harden. I mean, when he, they first did it, it didn't make sense on paper. Right? Having all these pieces, how are they going to fit? But when Russ moved to the bench, we got to get Russ. That's my dog. Russ, he moved to the bench, and they kind of made everything make sense. I feel like that that's what really changed their whole season around. By him taking a high role and being that leader that he is and going to the bench, that just opened mm-hmm. up our whole offense. Now, even Russ and James Harden on the floor, they getting better with their chemistry. So it's like, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, man. Made it through this episode, episode three. How you feel, man? Please. How you feel? Please. It's a solid episode, man. 2024 is going to be a lot of magnificent things that happen to me. So, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to all the great things that's ahead for us, man. Yeah, man, we just got to stay consistent, stay disciplined, continue on getting better every episode. And just like, it just be more organized, be more organized with each other. Probably do it more than once a week, but, you know, I'm trying to make it happen. We're gonna have to start. We're gonna have to figure that out. Yeah. We're gonna have to figure out how to be more, you know, give the fans a little bit more, more clips. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's what people want to see. They want to see them look good through while they on court or something for five minutes, six minutes, or whatever, so they can talk about it while they on break or whatever. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy about. I got. I'm just like I said last episode. This is becoming easy. Yeah. Is the more we doing it, it's like second nature to me, you know what I mean? Yeah, so man. I'm looking forward to to multiple things that we got for this show, man. Right? Yeah, we just just working on getting better and then we gonna make it there. No, we are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are. We are. Yeah, man. That's it for this episode. Hope you like, comment, and subscribe on both our channels on the Gateway News channel. You got MJ Talented channel. Subscribe, comment, like, everything, man. We in here. We in here. We here. We here. Yeah, man. I'm gonna see yeah, y'all. Sir. 
I'm gonna see y'all next time. Let's get it.